awake out there? Good morning. Hello? Okay. Let's stand up. Can we stand up? I know you'd rather be taking a nap. I, I understand that. The rain just kind of gives off that nice little nap feeling. But uh, first song we want to sing together is Waymaker. And the pictures and the video that Dan has put behind this are the, the miracles that Jesus performed, which typically wants to make me weep. I'll do my best not to this morning, but if you look at them and you see where he does make a way where there seems to be no way. We've all in this room, I'm sure, had instances where that has been the circumstances where you think, Lord, I have no idea how in the world this is going to happen or how we're going to work this out. And I don't know how many times the Lord has had to say to me, now wait a minute, I'm going to work this out if you just let me. That's one of like those head slaps, you know, that you need. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and sing this song. We've sung it before. Hopefully you know it. But if not, you can just stand there and smile or whatever works. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. Amen. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you team like they were doing that. Marie sends me a picture and she's got a little arrow wrote on there. The next praise team member. Well, they don't turn my mic on until I get ready to walk up here, so I'm pretty sure they don't want to hear me singing. But we have some announcements. Today is the church picnic. And if you notice everywhere it says it's going to be at the Eastview Park, it's not going to be at the Eastview Park. It's going to be right here at the back because it's raining and storming and Nobody wants to play in the mud. Go figure. Another announcement. July. We're going to go out to the do good to have some dinner. 
together as a group. But in order for us all to be able to sit together and to get in, we need to know how many people are going. So we need reservations. We need people to know the, how many by 7th. Is that what we said? We need to know by July 7th if you're going or not. We're going to put a sign-up sheet out there, uh, get hold of a A-team member and tell them, Bertie, any of us, and that way we know how many people to put down so we can all sit together. It's usually a, a really good time, so we just want to invite everybody to come along. Oh, and also, we're going to start our Christmas in July. Um, we're donating to the call ministry. There's a little Christmas tree set up already. There's going to be some totes set around it for stuff to give. They like non-perishable food items. That's one of the things they need. And they said hygiene items is something that they really can use. Plus, anything for babies, that's something else that they can use a lot of. They'll take about anything, but those are the three main things that they're really wanting and asking for. And also, cash is king, so if you want to give some money, I think the church usually puts together a check with everything that's donated, and we hand that in, too. So now, I'm sure what you've all eagerly been waiting for, last week we had the ugly tie contest. Huh? Not ugly, the novel tie. We re coined the word novel tie. We had six people who came in their wildest ties, and our winner... We had over 130 votes total. Some people voted more than once, but it's okay. Well, I mean, on, you know, the different people, but our winner was Rich Phillips. Oh. I got 100 grand for you. <laughs> the, the winner was going to receive 100 grand. This is his 100 grand. I'll give it to you when I come down. Now, I'm given time to say stuff, so here we go. Prayer is just a conversation between you and God. Don't be afraid to talk to Him. Don't worry about what you will say. You can't do it wrong. Just speak from your heart. God just wants to hear from us. He, love, he loves to have a conversation with us. Just like you talk to a friend, talk to God. We was talking in Sunday school class. It's okay to be real with God. We were talking about Lazarus. And his, sis, his sisters were, they were very sad that their brother died. And they come, when Jesus came, they come to him and they said, if you had only been here, our brother would still be alive. They didn't hold back. They didn't try to be politically correct. They just said, if you would have been here, he would be alive. We're allowed to talk to God. Just say, I'm upset by this. This I don't understand. But we're also allowed to say, you know, I appreciate this so much. I love this. Thank you so much. Be real with God. Don't hold back. Just tell him. He wants to hear from us. Um, whoops. Hold on. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we'll pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your peace which passes all understanding. The peace that keeps me calm during adversity. The peace that leads me through all the storms that come into my life. Father, thank you for my life and your presence in it. In Jesus' name. Lord, we just come to you right now. We want to thank you for being here with us. You said where two or more are gathered together that you would be there. And you would be in our presence. We just thank you for being here. We pray, Lord, for your guidance, for your direction, for your leading. And we pray for your peace. And we ask you just to be with the, the praise team as they're leading us in songs. And be with the message. And we pray, Lord, that you will be there with us. and. You just help us to get out of the words that you have for us. We just thank you and we praise you. And amen. Test check one, two. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, 
pastor had to take uh, Gretchen to the hospital this morning. So the pastor will not be here. Remember him in your prayers. But uh, let's have a word of prayer over the offering. Almighty God, we love you, Lord. You've given us so much, Lord. Just enable us to give back to you and let it be used for your glory and your greatness. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. died for my transgressions that he paid the price a long long time ago how he gave his life for me on a hill called Calvary but there's something now I'd really like to know Does he still feel those nails Every time I fail Does he hear the crowd cry crucify again Am I causing him pain gotta change cause I just can't bear the thought of hurting him it seems that I'm so good at breaking promises and I take his precious grace so carelessly but each time he forgives oh what if he relives the agony fell on that tree does he still feel the name I fail. Does he hear the crowd cry, crucify again? Am I causing him pain? Well, I know I've got to change. I really can't stand the thought of hurting him.
blessings in the service this morning as you preach. As you preach in the next service. Okay. Well, as you heard, the pastor uh, made an early morning call to me that Gretchen was uh, not doing well this morning and he was taking her to the emergency room. And uh, he is there now, so we want to remember both of them in prayer, special healing touch for Gretchen. And a couple announcements. Uh, Sunday, July 2nd, we will have a special missionary speaker from Mozambique, Adimi and Salish Chagulula. I'm not sure if I said that right, but they're from Mozambique. Um, our district superintendent, Jeff Kunselman, was over there for a period of time a few months ago, and, and they're staying at the campground, and they're going to come uh, and speak to us on July 2nd. Uh, they have uh, their two children with them. One's a student at Treveca, and the other, and I think, is still not with them back in Mozambique. And I think they're being called to some other mission field that they'll share with us at that time. Church camps are coming up, and remember the church pays 50% for any child uh, that would like to go. Um, this morning we're going to have Ron Kuhn come and speak about the persecuted church, and then I'll give you a little more details after that. Ron, would you come and morning yeah, it's been a hectic hectic month it's been a good month but a hectic month uh, finally getting around to presenting Indonesia which was this month's persecuted church um, sort of even this weekend it was like you know I was busy yesterday with Landon and the kids we enjoyed ourselves we went down to the Carillon Park, they had a, uh, a a railroad festival. So, and it's sort of like I, I was doing this, and uh, and the week was busy, and it was like, Lord, help me. I normally don't like to put things off, you know, at all. And it was like I, I Saturday, I well, I got home uh, Friday from work. It, uh, it wasn't like it was like six o'clock. Uh, no, it was 5.30. And I asked Pam, I said, what time does the library close? 6 o'clock. Oh, I better copy my information now. So I got up there, got the information down for Indonesia. I like having that in hand. And then uh, I said, well, you know, I'll, when I come back, I'll, and it was like Saturday after we got back from the rail festival, you know, got a little late. I was like, Lord, help me here. I, I, I just don't like doing things. I, I want to pray about things and stuff. And lead me to the scripture and what you want me to. And he led me right to it. And I'm like, wow. So first off, I'm going to share the information. And then we'll go to the scripture and we'll pray. Um, talking about Indonesia. Okay, this is an overview of the country of Indonesia. Indonesia has the largest Muslim population in the world with a total of more than 220 million Muslims or about 13% of the world's Muslim population. While most Indonesian Muslims practice an animistic and superstitious version of Islam known as folk Islam, Proponents of Islamic extremism have encouraged and engaged in violence against Christians. The wickedness of these attacks has led to many Muslims to question Islam and to be more open to the gospel. Bold evangelists are taking advantage of this opportunity to share the gospel and lead many Muslims to faith in Christ. Okay, the major religion, of course, we know, 82% of Indonesians are Sunni Muslims and 13% are Christians including 3% being evangelical 
The main persecutors in Indonesia are Islamic extremists who influence moderate Muslims. While the government does not normally persecute Christians, neither does it consistently defend them. Okay, here's what it means to follow Christ in Indonesia. Even though it is illegal to evangelize, it is legal, though difficult, for Muslims and others to convert to Christianity. Christians living in cities can worship openly. In rural areas, Christians who actively share their faith face persecution from Muslims, local governments, and the community. In some areas, small house churches of about 12 people are generally tolerated and allowed to meet openly. Muslims pay a price for converting to Christianity. And even in cities, most Christian converts from Islam choose to attend churches outside their community because of the persecution. Those who openly share their faith face pressure from family members because their conversion affects the family's social standing. Muslim families often disown their children who come to faith in Christ. Foreigners who openly evangelize Muslims are required to leave the country. One Indonesian province uh, named Ekek, E-C-E-H, Ekek, that, anyway, that province in Indonesia has implemented Islamic law, just like so many places in some of these other countries are doing, you know, their states or their provinces or whatever. Access to Bibles. Bibles are available in most cities, but not in many rural locations. Indonesians can legally own a Bible, and the Indonesia Bible Society prints Bibles inside the country. However, many live in hostile and remote areas where Bibles are unavailable, and others cannot afford to purchase one. So that's pretty much what's going on in Indonesia. And like I said, I was uh, praying to the Lord about the scripture, and it's like I it just opened right to it. A lot of times I know I use scriptures to, um, you know, feel the plight of the persecuted. Well, this scripture is, I believe, how the persecuted survive. And, and really, this what I'm reading we can apply to our own lives when we face, even if it's not religious persecution, just our own trials, our own tribulations, our own physical ailments, our own things we go through in life. Um, I'm reading from Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 through 7. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. David's talking about himself here, by the way. And the last verse, verse 7, says, The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. I just felt that was appropriate for the persecuted as well as all us as believers in Jesus Christ. Whatever we're going through, whatever we face, God's there. His angels are there. He's there to lift us up. But we got to have faith in him and lift him up and praise him. I found this interesting. The Lord brought this to me today and considering everything going on, you know, with Gretchen and just, it's just sort of a different day today because, you know, church camp, everything's a little more chaotic. But the Lord is there and he will bless each and every one of us. And you know it talks about boasting, and boasting is wrong, but it says here, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. We, boasting in the Lord is not wrong. And, you know, and it says down here, and their faces were not ashamed. So, anyway, with that, I will...
Let's bow our heads and I'll lead in prayer. Um, Lord, we thank you for gathering us today. We know today it's raining. We know that we planned a picnic today, but we can worship you here in this building. We also know that Gretchen, uh, things are going on with her. Bless her and bless the pastor as they work this situation out, Lord, but we know that we still boast in you. We still praise your name. We know that you're in the midst of that situation as well. And for even situations in our own lives, Lord, that we personally go through. And this also applies, of course, to us as well as the persecuted church, Lord. They suffer many things that we can't even fathom, Lord. Be with, in particular, be with the believers over in Indonesia, Lord, who serve you and love you and worship you, Lord. We pray for their protection, for their guidance, that they can get Bibles and get the right leading and guidance as they read your word, as I pray to you. And um, we ask, Lord Jesus, for your protection upon them. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. As Tim was talking earlier about prayer and that we don't need to have any uh, these and thous and wherefore and all that kind of stuff, I have found myself in the last few years saying this or that and praying this or that to the Lord, and then all of a sudden it comes, oh, but you already knew that, so okay, um, let's move on. But it's like there's sometimes when you and this is what he wants us to do to bring all our worries all the good stuff i mean we do have good stuff you know we do and uh his faithfulness is unbelievable in all of our lives but there's sometimes when you say stuff i at least me you know little i don't know my brain is just like well lord you, you heard me like here i am again you know and but let's be truthful i've heard this from I forget, some pastor that spoke, oh, it was um, Dr. Crocker, and he talked about, it's like when his daughters call him, one of them calls him Papa, another one, I forget, but like his phone, he was preaching, and the phone rang, and it was one of his daughters. He said, and I answered it, and he said, <laughs> it was kind of funny, he had a lot of humor. And he just said, you know, and there's like, there's like one of those Pharisees out in the crowd that I could tell. And he goes, yes, some of us can be Pharisees. He goes, I could see by the look on her face, she thought, why did you answer the phone in the middle of your sermon? But he said, when my children call, I want to answer. And I want to hear from them. And he put in the perspective of God always wants to hear from us, no matter what it is, how dingy it is, or how good it is, or how... You know, whatever you know sometimes we whine and complain to the lord too maybe you don't i you know i have moments so but to glorify our lives you know whatever we say whatever we wherever we're at you know the grocery store walmart you know you see a lot of stuff anyways but to still be kind in the midst of that to be Jesus to people is a big deal am i dying here oh well whatever Anyways, if you would stand with me again. Sorry, it's one of those days where my brain uh, left the building a little while ago. Anyways, so it's Glorify Thy Name. That's a really good song. So if you would sing with me this morning, the words will be up there.
that's fine. If you don't, you'd rather sit down, that's fine. The next song we want to sing is The Longer I Serve Him. And many of us, however many years we've been serving the Lord, we realize that the longer we serve Him, the sweeter He grows. Our, our time with Him changes over the things that have happened in our lives and the things that have changed us for the good, if we let it. And um, the times when it just, it's sweeter. It just feels that much closer. So that's the song we want to sing now. Sometimes it does get a little dry in our hearts and our minds, but spending that time with the Lord and hearing sermons like that fills that well right back up to where we can go out again, do what we need to do, and to be Jesus again. So the last song before prayer, Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the Living God. Thank you. 
as we come to you this morning, we do thank you and we love you so much. And Lord Jesus, we lift up our spirits to you, Father. And Lord, we just thank you for those songs that we've been singing. You are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. And serving you is so true, Father. Every day it has become sweeter as we walk with you in this life. And Lord Jesus, we're in a kind of a different scenario this morning. I got up this morning never thinking I'd be up in front of everybody here praying. But God, you know, Father, that when you're with us, Father, you promised us that you would never leave us alone, Father, and we're two or more gathered in your name. You said that you'd be with us. So we thank you, Father, for that promise and that truth. And we sense your spirit here this morning. Even though it may be a different scenario, you're still here, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the wonderful week we had of camp services, Lord Jesus, for Dr. Deal and our pastors, and electing a new district superintendent. We pray, God, that you'll be with him, Brother Monin, Father, as he do, takes over the reins of this district. And Father, I lift up this morning our church, Lord, we have many needs. And I think of myself and my recent surgery, and I'm not 100% yet, but Lord, you work with me. And some days I get frustrated by some of the things. I know some of these people we've been praying with for some time. Lord, I'll just lift their names up to you again, Lord. We think of Deb. We think of Jane and Kate, our dear Kate that's at home, Father. Dave and Carmen. And Lord Jesus, Sherry out there in Tennessee. We've all had prayers for them, Father, and we know that they're continuing to deal with issues physically. And again, we just ask you to continue to touch them and lift them up. And Lord, just be with them in those moments when there's frustration that enters in. You say, you know, almost to the point of saying, well, Lord, I'm almost to the point of giving up. Be with them, Father. And oh, Lord God, just be especially near them and surround them with your love. And it's just been brought to our attention here that uh, Bruce, that's been part of this church in the past, Father, was involved in a terrible motorcycle accident in Alaska and has some very serious injuries. We lift up Bruce this morning to you, Lord Jesus, and ask you to continue to touch and help. In some ways, it's a miracle that he survived. And we know that uh, you still have a work to be done in his life. And we ask that you be with him. We ask that you be with his dad, Dave, that's been part of this church for so many years down in Florida. We know how he must be feeling at this time, Lord Jesus. So just surround him and all of the family members with your special love. And also brings it to our attention. There's still those, Father, in our church who are grieving over, over lost ones, Father. We think of Denise, Father, and the loss of her brother, Nathan. Again, we just ask that you just surround her, touch her in a special way, and provide that moment of strength and peace in those hours of loneliness. In the Coon family over the loss of this grandly, grandmother, oh God, we love you. We know, Father, that when there's no other answer, you provide it, Father. You provide the strength and the courage that gets us through these hours and those times, Father. So again, we ask that you surround them with your special love. And brought just to our attention here, just as we came up in front of the platform, our brother Carl that just sang. Father, we ask that you be with uh, his request of his daughter that will be going into surgery this week. Again, we lift up her, Father, and we lift up the ones that will be doing the surgery, Father, and that you just touch them in a special way. And of course, Father, most of all, Father, at this moment, Father, we bring up and lift up Gretchen. Father, we just praise your precious name for all the wonderful, miraculous things you've done in her life, Father, that have brought her to this point. But we've had a bit of a setback this morning, Father. We know she's over there in that hospital in cold water. We just pray, God, that the answers will be given to the doctors, that you just provide a special touch on her, Father. Oh, God, and just bring her back to us real quick, Father, we pray. And be with Pastor Chris, Lord. You know, that he's under, been under such a burden, Father, for this church and with his wife. Oh, God, just give him a special sense and direction this morning, Father, in peace and calm in the midst of the storm, Father, that only you can provide. And Father, as we go ahead and continue in this service, Father, 
We ask that you be with our brother Larry as he'll be ministering to us, Father, in a special way this morning, Father. Again, he's not in a position to be really prepared for what's going to happen to him today. So, God, we just ask a special anointment and touching on his life. And the words that he says, Father, this morning will not be words from here, his mouth, but words from your mouth, Father God. So, again, Father, we ask that you just continue to guide, lead, and direct us in everything, Father. We love you so much, and we appreciate and love everyone in this church, Father. Just make us a special lighthouse in this community carrying forward your name, your name and gospel, Father. And may many be reached through this church, Father God. And may people just realize how special this church is. We thank you for all you do and continue to ask and continue to bless us in every special way possible that we ask this precious thing, these things in your precious holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. For those of you that think I'm going to preach, I'm not. I, I, I'm going to say a few words, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share something on the screen in a few minutes. Um, the pastor called me early this morning and uh, told me that he needed to take Gretchen to the hospital and um, wouldn't be here and that all of his count on people were also not going to be here. And so he was kind of going down the list and he ended up with no one else to call. And uh, he said, so just do what you need to do. And uh, I, I've spent a, it's been a busy couple weeks. Uh, I was at General Assembly and uh, lots of tremendous sermons and, and worship that took on there on top of the business. And then at camp this week, uh, some great messages, some business. One of the themes of General Assembly was, the main theme was, He is Lord. And, and throughout kind of putting back, how many of us have a good day now and then? I mean, there are times when it seems like it was just a good day. Uh, nothing bad happened to us. And He is Lord. And then there are those days that aren't quite so good. Um, maybe you spilled your coffee on some papers or maybe you just dropped something or you forgot something that was supposed to be uh, taken care of and it's like it's not the end of the earth but it just happened uh, maybe you bought your wife an ice cream cone and she dumped it on you uh, <laughs> Not a big deal. She just was going to show me something, and it kind of went, oops. And uh, it's just one of the... But you know, in those times, he is Lord. And then there are those days when we can't hardly look beyond the moment. We've all had them. Some of us are going through them. Pastor and Gretchen are going through one of those have been going through something. And in those days where you say it can't get any worse, and I, I, I've learned never to say that anymore because I don't have to look very far to find someone that's worse than I am. But in those days, he is still Lord. And he wants to take care of us. He doesn't want us to worry. Now, how many of you worry. You don't have to raise your hand. Um, I'm one of these guys, I'm a planner, and I'm, I'm a guy that has things scheduled out, and, and I don't get surprised too often because I'm pretty organized. And, and so I don't worry, but I get really concerned when things aren't going well. And so it's always worry, but it's concern. But there's a point in there where I have to lean on the Lord and say, there's really nothing I can do. But I have to lean upon Him to do that. There was mention during assembly, and, and, and I've uh, been talking to people through the district, uh, 
superintendent process and, and the Mount Vernon presidential that said, you know, I told the Lord my life is a blank check and he can fill it in. And there was a sermon. He talked about that at, at the camp meeting this week. And so we have a blank check. And that's kind of hard because for guys like me that like to have control and like to plan and don't like surprises, we don't want somebody filling something in in our life that's not kind of in our plan. And so it kind of brings me, I want to talk about our pastor for a minute, and, and I'm not, I've already said more than I thought I was going to say. <laughs> but our pastor, you all know him, you love him. One of him, if you picked a word to describe him, most of you would say he's a worker. He's a guy that gets it done. He doesn't let somebody else do it. He rolls up his sleeves. Gretchen's the same way. They are workers. They are doers. They get things done. He's also a prayer warrior. How many times has he called you on the phone when something wasn't right and he said, can I pray with you before I go? Anybody? Huh? He always says, can I pray with you? And he cares for other people. He doesn't just sit at home and say, well, I hope everybody's doing well. He calls to see how you're doing. I know there's times when he says, Bertie, can you call so-and-so and so-and-so because I've got to do this and this. And he wants to know how we're doing. So he cares for others. And he doesn't sit well. Can you imagine what he's going through this morning, sitting in the waiting room when he wants to be here? Now, Tom said his sermon notes are on there. You could preach it. <laughs> yeah, that would have been interesting. But he cares about us. But you know what he would say? He is Lord. Even through all of this, God is Lord. And I'm trusting him. And I don't understand. But I'm trusting him. And I know he's concerned when he looks out sometimes, and it's not the numbers in the church, but he's talked to me and he said, you know, I feel some people are falling away from God. They're, they're just not part of the fellowship. And it's hard to be a Christian and stay where we need to be by ourselves. We need the church. I know that he's concerned sometimes over the giving. He hates to preach and ask for money. But he knows the needs of the church need to be taken care of. And the programs and the calling. And so, I don't want to say the pastor's worried. Because we're not supposed to worry. And I'm going to share a short video here about worry. Um, and that we need to give it to God. Because there's really nothing we can do about it anyways. We think, you know, I think I'm a person that controls a lot of things. Uh, no. That's just my head knowledge that tells me that sometimes. I don't really control anything. I need to leave it to God. And I always felt like I was, I, I've said I've been called to the ministry, but I was not called to the pulpit. The Lord didn't give me up here in the pulpit every week but he's called me to be in the ministry and to help people and to do things and to support the church and, and the greater church and his kingdom and so I sometimes think I can but it's all resting upon what God gives us our abilities, our talents and we need to never get full of ourselves and think that we have it because he can break us or we can be broken in a second. Uh, my friend Bruce was riding his motorcycle at 65 miles an hour and touched the brakes to uh, knock the crews off and the wheels locked up and threw him over the front of the bike at 65 miles an hour. Just like that, his life has changed. Lots of broken bones. We pray that he's going to be okay. So... This morning, I'd ask you to just watch. It's about a 10-minute. Uh, Tom's going to put it up there. But it says, give it to God 
And stop worrying and trust God with your life. Tom? will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then in Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus said very plainly, very repetitively, do not worry. I'm of the opinion that if Jesus says not to do something, he has our best interest at heart. He's not being meddlesome. He's not trying to limit us. He's concerned about our well-being. And we've missed something. Something has eluded us. We have tolerated something in our lives, in our thoughts, in our emotions. We've tolerated something, allowed it to flourish, that in reality is destructive, that Jesus has said, don't do that. That we are so twisted and tied up and, and melting down in our own worries and problems. And we forget that we have a heavenly father right there saying, do you want my help? And we just got to say, I want your help and trust that he can do what he needs to do. Let him do the work that needs to be done. Look, if you're counting on yourself to solve all of your problems, then of course you're worried and stressed out. It doesn't matter how strong or wise or capable, how charismatic you are. It doesn't matter how much wealth or influence you have. You are not designed to be able to take on everything and handle everything. You will have more problems come at you than what you are capable of handling. When you carry the responsibility of everything, then you have to do everything. You have to find the solutions. You have to choose the right direction. You have to power through problems. You have to plan for the future, make adjustments. And you have to do all of it at the speed of life. Yeah, you're stressed out. You're worried, of course. But God does not want you to do it on your own. He wants you to recognize that he is there to lead you, to walk you through, to guide you through every step of the way. And, and here's the deal. He doesn't want to just give you every resource that you need to get through your problems. He wants to be what you need in every situation. It's amazing the problems that are solved the moment that you decide to trust God in everything. Because when you trust God, you don't have to try to figure anything out anymore. As you lean on Him, then you take the pressure off of yourself. Because you don't have to try to figure stuff out. You don't have to try to change things that you've already tried a million times to change and the more you try to change them, the more frustrated it makes you. Because you can just finally say, well, God, I'm trusting you with this and if you can't change it, then I guess it don't need to be changed. The only way you can learn to stop worrying and stop trying to figure things out, stop being jealous of what other people have and is I just honestly think that in addition to studying the Word, I think that we just have to try it our way long enough to finally just get worn out enough to just say, okay, God, I surrender. Do you know the beginning, you know the end, and everything in between? You know every flaw that I have, every fault that I have, you know every weakness that I have, as well as my strengths. I surrender. So many times I've just said, God, I don't know what to do. God, I'm overwhelmed, or God, I'm in over my head. And you know, I, I've said this many times, God, help, please. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be eloquent. I don't have to have the answers or the solutions. I just need to go to the one who does have the answers. Hey, have you ever been on an emotional roller coaster? Uh, I mean, you're just up, you're down, you're this way. And you know what God says? I'll take care of that. You ever go to bed thinking about it? Wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it? In the morning you get up, you're thinking about it. Man, it has captured your thinking. God says, I'll take your emotion and your thinking through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And what that means is that we take all of our problems and our worries and we choose to place it in God's hands 
and say, I trust that you will handle the outcome? Are you confident that you can take your problems and your worries and place it in God's hands and that he can handle everything? Worry is the anticipation of the negative. In fact, there's a relationship between faith and worry. It's inverse. Faith diminishes as worry flourishes. Or as your faith flourishes, your worry will diminish. Worry is the negative expression of what faith in God is. One of them would be, I don't want Jesus to ever look at me and use my name and person of little faith in the same sentence. Do you? I want to be a man of faith. Worry is saying, I don't think God can handle this, so I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to invest emotional energy in my thoughts, in my anxiety. I'm not going to change the outcome a bit. Jesus said, you can't add one hour to your life. God can add years. God has the best solution for all of our problems. He sees and knows everything. He sees the future. He understands every angle of what is going on in your life right now. He understands how people are viewing it and perceiving it. He sees the best solution to your problems. He's incredibly wise. When I worry, I am basically saying I am afraid that my life is not going to be that I, the way that I want it to. But when I trust that God has the best solution, I am saying, God, I, I believe that you have the best way for me. Even if it's not the path that I chose or that I came up with. And we can trust that if we follow God and if we trust him, he will give us every resource that we need every step of the way. And that at the end, he can turn that into something wonderful and beautiful. And let me tell you, if you have someone who loves you enough and who is strong enough and who has the best solution, what do you have to worry about? See, the reason that worry exists so often is because we just think it's normal. It's not normal. It's common, but it's not normal. It doesn't have to be in our life. And it's, it's robbing us of God. It's robbing us of our family. It distracts me from God and people. It robs me of my joy. And it exists because I allow it to exist. Listen to what I'm saying. Worry exists and anxiety exists because we allow it. We are in complete control of our lives. God would never command us to do something that we don't have the ability to do. Worry is a choice and trust is a choice. You can't do both at the same time. You have to choose to put your trust in God, put the full weight of your problems and your life and your future into his hands and let him carry it. Worry and anxiety means the devil has implanted something in your life that's just sitting there intimidating you. And because of that, you can't focus on God and the people that you love. And that's the greatest problem with worry and anxiety. It robs you of your ability to worship, to love the people that you love. So it's an enemy. The root of all fear, worry, and anxiety is an orphan spirit because orphans are on their own and they have to take care of their own problems. And the devil wants you to feel as though that you're on your own and you have to solve your own problems. You have the best father in the universe. Stop grieving over the father you didn't have and start rejoicing that you have the best father in the universe. And he loves helping you process anything in your life. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too large. He just enjoys the ride. He just enjoys the relationship. And as we're sitting here obsessing about something, what it means is we're wasting the relationship. He does see your problems and he wants to help you. God's love for you is so immense and that means that you can come to him with anything and everything. We don't have to lead lives that are defined by worry and anxiety and fear. Doesn't mean those things won't come and they may even come with justification. But Jesus said we don't have to worry about them. He is my provider. He is my protector. He is my promoter. He is the person that I long for in every relationship. He is the place that I look to to find home. He is my professor to reveal beautiful new things to me. He is everything that I need and everything that I long for when I go to him. The key to peace is not being able to solve every problem. The key to peace is resting in who God is. 
When we give God control, there's a beautiful promise that he will never leave or forsake you. Man, we can walk in that path, in that promise towards peace. He doesn't want you to be overwhelmed with worry and problems. He wants you to be overwhelmed with his love for you. And you may be saying, look, you don't understand how many problems I have, how many issues and how much I've gone through. Well, you know what? God says, no matter what you have, I want to take all of your problems, all of your worries, all of your failures, all of your sin, all of your brokenness, give it to me because I can handle it. And the truth is only I can handle it. You know, there's some deep heartfelt things in there if we can just take it and trust our Father to lead our lives and turn everything over to Him. Would you stand with me this morning as we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you and we're so thankful that you care for each one of us and that your plan is the best for our lives and that we can trust you with every decision, every choice that comes in our way and we don't have to worry, we don't have to fret that you have it all in control. We ask that this morning that you would just be with Pastor and Gretchen, that you would just put your loving arms around them and you would surround them with a peace and comfort and give them the assurance that you are in control and that you have the best in mind for them. We ask that you would be with this church, you would be with each one of us. Help us to be a beacon to those round about us that they can see your love in our lives. Help us to be people of faith. Help us to be people that of kindness and people of appreciation for what you have given to us, eternal life. We love you and thank you, and we give you the praise in all that you do in our lives in your precious holy name. Amen.